I'll be honest. Even though I have seen a lot of evil all my life, listened to evil music and struggled with a lot of contradiction in my head, I never thought that uh, it was possible to hate something as much as I know hate everything related to Russia. Every day I hear tons of lies that are made up by Russian propagandists. I see and hear an incredible amount of people who swallow the shit and believe everything these bastards say. Even those of my friends who now live in Russia but come from Ukraine and know me from a young, from a young age, when they call me to find out how my family and I are doing, I hear phrases from the Russian government and propaganda in their speeches. And at the same time, another part of my friends went to the front to defend their homeland. Some of them will never return home. They were killed by bullets and shells feed by this lie. I am 100% sure that the truth is on the side of Ukraine and we will win because we are supported by the entire civilized world. Civilized world. But uh, for this we make a huge sacrifice. Uh, the Russians will not get their way. They will not get Ukraine and they will not take away uh, our right to independence and freedom. But many of our cities are in ruins, many families are separated, many people and destinies are crippled, and it will take us a long time to heal these wounds after our victory. I really look forward to this time, but to be honest, I love, I'm afraid of it no less than the war, because when we defeat the external enemy, we will have another terrible meeting, a meeting with ourselves. And we all know that uh, we are no longer the same as we, as we were before February 24, 2022. It's just that now all of us Ukrainians have a reason not to notice this. But anyway, it will happen. Abstract began as uh, my old idea, which I dreamed of bringing to life for a long time. In 2016, I had cardinal changes in my life. I said goodbye to all the bands in which I played. I was preparing to become a father. And then I realized that this is it. It was time to bring my ideas to life. By happy coincidence, my old friend and drummer Volodymyr called me... Uh, with an offer to play together. At that moment, he also left all his old bands. Uh, I already had a few songs, so we quickly started uh, to uh, to working on the first album. Uh, I did all the strings, lyrics and vocals, and Volodymyr did the drums accordingly. Uh, we recorded the first album, Phobos Rising, just together. Uh, and. Uh, of course, we were looking for the missing members of the band, but the relations with potential candidates somehow did not work for us. I think that we weren't able to put together a full lineup for a long time because most of the musicians who tried themselves in Obstruct either didn't like this metal as much as we do, or didn't understand my ideas, or didn't take the band seriously enough. Later, when we already had material for two-thirds of the second album, Damos Fallen, we finally found another two members, guitarist Serhi and bass player Alexander. Uh, at the moment, I think this is the best composition of the band. Uh, well, 
In two words, I would describe our music as mid-tempo atmospheric death metal. Uh, forgive me fans of other metal genres who don't agree with the word in atmospheric. Mm, this is just my feeling. Uh, most of all, I am inspired by bands such as Bloodbath, Morbid Angel, uh, Monstrosity, Arch Enemy, uh, Age of Sanity and Vader. Uh, I always felt some oppressive atmosphere in this music, which fascinated me and aroused probably incompatible emotions in me, anger and apathy, and at the same time happiness and strength. That's why, first of all, I always think about what kind of atmosphere and emotion this or that sonor struct will deliver to the listener and not how technically or quickly it will sound. That's it. <laughs> well, uh, I think that this topic can qualify for a separate interview. In fact, it's quite difficult. Uh, there are th uh, three main problems. The possibility, the possibility of shelling, uh, blackouts due to the damage of the energy infrastructure, and a curfew. Uh, we never know at what moment uh, the shelling can begin and what kind of weapons the enemy will hit this time. Kamikaze drones, ballistic missiles, or something else. Mm, you have probably seen a lot of news about how the Russians are directing their attacks on our civilian infrastructure. It could be anything from a mall to a club where we are holding a concert. Because of this, uh, some of, of the people are generally afraid to attend such events and some immediately leave the concert in the direction of the nearest bomb shelter as soon as the air alert starts. Uh, then blackouts are also a rather unpleasant factor, but we have learned to cope with it the fastest. Uh, last fall, the Russians heavily shelled our energy sector. Because of this, all establishments and shops were forced to buy generators in order to be able to maintain and at least somehow uh, develop their business in this difficult time. Uh, but before everyone uh, started buying generators, it was certainly quite unusual when you are performing on stage or standing listening to a band uh, in the hall, and then suddenly the light go out and the whole club plugs into pitch darkness. It's good that everything is fine with us now, thanks to our power engineers for their painstaking work and to our foreign partners for their help and support. And of course curfew. Uh, at the moment, according to martial law, citizens don't have the right to be outside the house from 12 p.m. to 5 a.m. The first year of the war, the curfew began, began even earlier. Public transport works accordingly. Taxis also cannot operate at night. And this also applies to personal transport. Therefore, now all events are forced to end at 9 p.m., no later. Otherwise, uh, either the artists will perform in front of an empty hall, because everyone is rushing home before the curfew, or people will simply not have time to get home on time and have problems with law enforcement. This is our reality for today, unfortunately. It's hard to say, the Ukrainian metal scene is thinning out, but those who have withstood all the blows of recent years, I mean COVID, and now the war, are making it stronger, because they themselves have become stronger. I really hope that Orbstruct 
and our friends from the Ukrainian Metal Underground will be able to carry their creative potential and vital energy through these dark times in order to continue to bring the spirit of Ukrainian metal to the world. Uh, well, it's hard to give a concrete answer here. Uh, judging others by yourself is certainly not right, so I'll just assume that uh, every musician creating some kind of concept album from the beginning to the end of this period is uh, in some kind of stable, unstable state. For example, I mean some kind of prolonged depression, or a long search for some meaning in something, it doesn't matter. The main thing here is the very fact of a long stay in one state. That's what happens to me, at least. At the time of the creation of the second album, I was at the stage of a strong rethinking of my views on the people around me and the world in general. Uh, therefore, Damus Fallen is more about how I was disappointed and uh, at the same time new hopes arose in me. During this period my environment around me changed a lot for the better. New, interesting and most importantly sincere people appeared. It's uh, clear that for this at first, I had to go through the stage of separation from some other people and getting out from, un uh, from under their influence. Uh, it was uncomfortable and uh, to some extent even caused panic because it's aching to live in the comfort zone. But I think that I coped with all this as best as possible and displayed this period in the abstract second album, Damus Fallen. Music is one of the few things that helps us not go crazy and cope with difficulties. Uh, we started uh, working on the new album almost immediately after finishing the recording of the second album They Must Fallen and we plan to start recording the third full-length album in the spring of 2022. But Russians attacked Ukraine and all plans were broken. Uh, subsequently, the time during which we recovered uh, from what had happened and learn to live in a new reality allowed us to properly rethink and rework new material. I really hope that this year we will be able to start recording it. But first of all, of course, now we have to protect our families and the country. So uh, it's not always possible to devote as much time to music as we would like. Uh, as the same goes, we'll wait and see. Uh, future of Abstract? Um, I have many more ideas that I would like to bring to life. That's why I see the future of Abstract bright and wonderful. Many more interesting releases, a good label, concerts all over the world, and meeting a lot of heavy music fans like us. So, I hope that in the foreseeable future we will be able to meet you personally when Abstract comes to your city with a concept. <laughs> <laughs>